order of HTXL. Okay, so today we're going, I'm going to teach you how to do a macroeconomic questions that is very likely to show up in your upcoming mock exam or paper one. Because this question, this exact question I'm going to teach you, actually showed up in the most, a similar question showed up in the most recent IB exam. So that's why in your this year's mock exam, I, I, I suppose it's quite likely this question will show up. A similar question is this. Okay, and um, if you want more free resources, you can refer to our the description of this video. We have a lot more free resources like question banks you can download, online video lessons you can attend. It will be tremendously useful for you. But anyways, for today, let's get to the point first. Okay, so explain actual growth and potential growth. What's the difference? Well, actual growth means an increase in the actual output or we can say an increase in real GDP. On the other hand, potential growth is an increase in the potential output. Okay. So potential output, what is potential output? Potential output is the maximum output that an economy can produce. That's the potential output, right? Potential, it means the same thing as maximum. Actual output is the actual amount of goods and services that are produced, okay? So what causes actual growth? If an economy, there's a greater actual growth, it's caused by greater employment of resources. If more resources are being employed to produce goods and services, then there will be an increase in the actual output. Normally this is caused by higher spending in the economy. Okay? That's actual growth. Okay? Potential growth, if, if the potential output of an economy increase, it is because of an improvement in the quantity or quality of factors of production. As simple as that. Okay? So, if we look at the diagram, a sh outward shift of the PBC, this entire curve shifting out, that is potential growth because the, the PBC curve is the maximum combinations of output that an economy can produce, right? So if the PVC shifts outwards, that would be uh, an increase in the potential output, okay? On the other hand, an increase from point X to point Y, a shift from point X to point Y represents an increase in the actual output. So what causes any potential output increase? For example, improvement in education of an economy. This can increase, improve the labor productivity and increase, lead to potential output growth. The part B of this question. Okay, so the question says growth is a macroeconomic objective. Evaluate whether growth is always beneficial to an economy. Okay, so first define growth. It can be actual growth or potential growth, which we have already talked about in part B. Okay, so so first off, obviously we need to talk about the benefits and the cost of growth. Okay, so benefit. The main benefit is that growth can allow improvement in living standards. This is why growth is a macro objective because growth. It's necessary in order to achieve uh, improvement in living standards in the long run. What's living standards? Living standards, you can say, refers to the level of health, education, and access to goods and services of a population, right? So with economic growth, there can be greater investment in healthcare and education and more access to goods and services, and therefore, growth can improve living standards in the long run, okay? And in, in fact, another thing you can say is that it is very difficult to achieve so you can say without economic growth, it is impossible to achieve improvement in living standard in the long run. Okay, that's actually a very common view. Okay, so growth allows improve uh, economic development, improvement in living standards. Okay, but what are the potential costs of growth? The first one is that economic growth can lead to more negative production externalities. Best example is China. Okay, you can say China, economic growth in China have led to a large amount of pollution, which have uh, increase reduce which have actually had a neg which had a negative impact on the health of uh, people in China. Okay, so you can draw the negative production externality diagram and then show that okay negative externality production externalities lead to a welfare loss for society. Okay, use China as an example. So as Chinese China's economy grew, there were more negative production externalities in the economy, which uh, created a welfare loss. The second point is that. If the growth is caused by an increase in AD, there can often be demand pool inflation. You can draw the ADS diagram showing AD shifting right against the S. Even though there's an increase in real GDP, the pr average price level goes up. So one of the trade-offs of achieving growth could be higher inflation. Okay. So yeah, China is an example again. So China inflation in China have been on the rise in the past few years due to high economic growth. Third point, you can say often 
growth often leads to technological advancements, right? So as an economy grow, more and more advanced technology will be implemented. And as new technologies are implemented, this can lead to structural unemployment. What's structural unemployment? Well, you can, it's in the previous chapter, but structural unemployment basically refers to unemployment that is caused by a permanent shift of the demand of a certain type of worker. So for example, in the, in the US, there have been uh, new um, innovations of invention of self-driving cars, which can potentially lead to structural unemployment for bus drivers, right? So you can see economic growth can lead to technological advancement, but these technological advancements can often create structural unemployment, for example, self-driving cars, okay? The next point is that if, if the economic growth Economic growth refers to an increase in income as well, right? And if if the increase in income only goes towards the rich, there can be more and more income inequality. In that case, the growth will not help be able to help the poor to break out of the poverty cycle and will not be able to help the poor to improve their living standards. And it will increase the income inequality in a country, which can potentially lead to political unrest, okay? Next point is that increase in output does not may not necessarily improve living standards because some forms of output do not improve living standards. For example, in North Korea, a, a big part of the GDP is military goods. However, these military goods do not improve living standards of North Koreans. So this is why um, economic growth may not necessarily lead to better living standards. For example, military goods. So what's the conclusion here? You can talk about how benefits does not always outweigh cost. It really depends on how the growth is being achieved, right? So, for example, if, um, if the, for example, if the, for example, growth can lead to negative production externalities, which is which can be highly costly. So, it ultimately, depend on how the growth is achieved. Okay. So yeah, if you want more free resources, go to the description box. There will be a lot of links. You can download our question banks and also watch our free video tutorials on our 